As the curtain rises, I request you subscribe if this video ends up impressing you, and watch until the end to see which characters are in the running for next episode. Princess Peach, gaming's leading lady, Mario's perpetual love interest, the video game damsel in distress who has become so much more than that. In Smash Bros., Peach actually has a pretty good reputation. A fanciful moveset that captures her personality well has given her a consistent player base from Melee onward. And since it also has depth and a shockingly high execution barrier, she's also had a presence competitively. Her moveset even got an A rating in my design tier list video from a while back. So then, why remake it? Because I think we can make her even better. Peach has had a renaissance of sorts lately, with new source material coming out and older stuff getting brought back. It's made her current moveset start to feel dated, and we can fix that before it becomes a problem. But how could Smash 6 update Peach in ways that improve on what's there, incorporate this new stuff, and, potentially, adjust her very physically demanding combos so they don't ruin the hands of her tournament players anymore? It won't be easy, but I think we can pull it off. So let's start the show and remake it! First is Peach's appearance and design themes, where we're starting on solid ground. Smash already captures her elegance and kind-heartedness pretty well. She always tries to speak to the inner goodness of everyone and find peaceful solutions, not out of naivety, but because she chooses to. If things go south anyway, though, she has ways to protect herself and even fight back, the latter increasingly often lately. Even when stuck in captivity, Peach can be quite resourceful, sneaking around behind enemy lines and recognizing where she can push her captors' limits, gathering intel and items to send to Mario behind their backs. Peach's brand new spin-off title is a natural extension of that, with her entering magical plays to take on a wide array of starring roles and drive off the forces of evil, which also happens to give us even more to work with for her Smash design, adding more depth, more abilities, and a couple more props to use. In moderation, not every move needs to be a reference. We can apply the same idea to Peach's alternate costumes. Take an already pretty good lineup, use new ideas to make it even better. She has a lot of unlockable dresses in Showtime, and we can take the patterns from some and apply them to most of her current alts. Her golden dress gains a starry design, red gets a lovely pattern of hearts, blue takes on the snowflakes of her figure skater dress and becomes a little lighter blue, green gets the fancy sword fighter roses, and her fire peach alt gains an original pattern with a fireball theme. As for the other two, I gave them a complete facelift. The wedding dress alt was very similar to Fire Peach, so I chose to replace it with a certain purple dress sporting an outer space themed pattern. And her last alt references a completely different game now, with a black and dark gray dress and a red diamond brooch, but no extra frill behind her head and no change to her hair or skin tone. A nod to a time when Peach was not herself. Maybe she's trying to reclaim the look? Now for Peach's details as a fighter, starting with her fighting style, which has been more or less consistent for a while. All the rework needs to do is refine it and add on. Peach's mobility isn't that great, and her range is pretty hit or miss, but she has tools to find openings, or, more often, provoke opponents into leaving themselves open. Getting violent only when someone else does first is very in character, and when she does roll up her sleeves, Peach can deal crazy amounts of damage in mere seconds. We'll be adjusting that a little, but not much. That second part, though, that's new. We've never had a rework in any of these videos emphasize team support before. Peach has always had a supportive streak, especially in Super Mario RPG, where she's the party's main healer. We can work this part of her personality into a couple of her specials, making her a particularly good team player in doubles matches or other such modes. Now let's see those stat changes I've been hinting at. These not only account for Peach's new abilities, they're also to make things less literally painful on the player's end. In Melee and Ultimate especially, she's infamous for complex combos that involve short hopping, immediately activating a mid-air float while performing an aerial or throwing a turnip, then fast falling as soon as possible to cut it short and endure landing lag while moving in the same direction as your foe's knockback so you can keep the conversion going. Doing it multiple times rapidly is necessary for all of her best combos, yet it's so physically demanding that it's given players actual medical problems before. To help alleviate the pain, I've adjusted how Peach's mid-air float works. If you perform an area while floating now and cancel the float during it, you'll incur a little more end lag or landing lag than usual, eliminating several prior float cancel combo routes. While this sounds like a big hit to what her players are familiar with, I've made up for it by adding new combo routes elsewhere that don't rely on float canceling, makes her more approachable to play, and cuts down on future doctor bills. 
I also compensated by giving Peach's mobility some help. Her walk speed is roughly 10% faster now, and a 5% faster initial dash gives her slightly better burst movement. But the big upgrade is 10% faster air speed, letting her maneuver around and chase foes down more easily. 10% might not sound like much, but it bumps her air speed from 48th place out of Ultimate's 89 characters all the way up to 30th. Peach does still have most of her old weak points, though. Still a lightweight who can't take a ton of hits, still has very slow fall speed with its pros and cons, and even with her mobility buffs, she still doesn't approach that well and struggles against opponents who outrange her. Winning with Peach would still require making the most of the tools you have available. Alright, let's see what's new with Peach's moveset. Starting with her basic attacks, her jab combo begins with the usual back and forth slap. But now it's got a third hit, based on her first weapon in Super Mario RPG when you hit its action command. Gives this very fast jab a little more damage. Peach's forward tilt is her first brand new move. Inspired by Showtime, she performs a short twirl with her hand outstretched that summons a magic ribbon and spins it in a horizontal semicircle in front of her. Helps out her range issues a little, and she can angle it up or down. The rest of this batch has the same base animations. Up tilt is completely the same. Attacking with a magical heart fits Peach to a T. Having surprisingly high knockback that lets it KO eventually also fits to a T. Her down tilt looks the same, but it works a little differently now. Instead of the kick spiking grounded foes, a carryover from its pre-ultimate animation, now it simply pops them upward. This allows for different follow-ups at different percents, so it's still great for comboing. And Peach's dash attack is the same as usual. This very fast two-hit magical shove is still great for bursting down opponents and finishing them off if they have a lot of damage. Who says hard is a lame power anyway? Peach's smash attacks still do a bunch of stuff. Her unusual forward smash is back, and with an upgrade. You still pick which improvised weapon she uses based on the angle you press, but now the animation changes too. The default golf club works like before, but angling down for the tennis racket has it come out slightly faster and aim lower now. And angling up for Peach's frying pan turns it into a slower yet stronger downward swing directly based on Mario RPG. Her up smash didn't need any changes. The ribbon-like visuals have been part of this move for a while. Wonder if this partially inspired her default stuff in Showtime. Peach's down smash functions like it used to, but with upgraded visuals. We can add sparkle effects along the edges of her dress that better justify the move's damage while emphasizing her magical talents at the same time. Very fancy. Peach's aerials also got a couple touch-ups, courtesy of stuff she learned in her adventure at the Sparkle Theater. Her neutral air is now a quicker, lengthier mid-air spin based on her figure skater role. This three-hit move drags opponents along until the end, and if you land prematurely, it has a landing hitbox that pops them upward. Which means you'll be able to combo it into full hop aerials at low to mid percents even with the changes to her float mechanic. Next, yeah, I wasn't about to change her forward air. If you didn't know why it hits so hard, it's because Peach takes her crown off and swings it. A slow yet powerful aerial that, again, highlights how resourceful she can be. And now, another new one. Peach's back air is now a strong yet graceful spin kick inspired by her role as a master martial artist. Has a longer hitbox than the move it replaced, but more importantly, it has less end lag that makes it less unwieldy to use. The remaining two moves are the same as before. Didn't need any changing. Peach's up air is still a magic rainbow that deals two hits, juggles foes with ease, and KOs off the top if you hit with it higher up. And her down air is still a series of four kicks that are perfect for using while floating for punishes, extending combos, and edge guarding people. How does Peach's grab game look now? Her grab animations are pretty normal. More normal than they used to be. Toad's been dismissed from helping her out. Peach fights fully under her own power once more, and it frees things up so some form of Toad could be a newcomer. But instead of her pre-ultimate pummel, Peach gets a new one, striking her foe with the back of her free hand. A pretty fast pummel that helps unstale her other moves. Peach's throws, however, got a big overhaul. Now her forward throw pulls from her second best weapon in Mario RPG, as she winds up and delivers an extra powerful slap that sends foes flying. That's gotta hurt. Another weapon gets in on the action next. In one fluid motion, Peach spins her foe behind her, unfurls a hand fan, and delivers a surprisingly powerful strike to their back. Not messing around, is she? Peach's up throw taps into her magic, creating a small pink vortex that propels her foe upward. I wanted to work something from Super Princess Peach into here, despite its mixed reputation. It even kills off the top around 160-ish. 
but she can throw hands directly sometimes. Without Toad around, her down throws back to what it was in Smash 4. Knockback values are left as they are though, so you can still use it to combo and etc. And for this act's final scene, Peach has a couple new taunts. Her up taunt is now a triumphant pose based more directly on the one from Super Mario RPG when she wins a battle. And her down taunt is now a long dramatic bow like the one actors traditionally take at the end of a play, complete with saying thank you, thank you to an off-screen audience. Her side taunt, I left alone. The little song and dance is still just as good at getting under people's skin as always. Our final act begins. What do Peach's specials look like now? We already gave Toad the boot, so we need a new neutral special that, hopefully, works better. For that, we turn to Peach's recent performance. Her default ability in Showtime when not in costume lets her interact with her surroundings, harming enemies and invigorating allies at the same time. Our version has Peach summon a magic ribbon on the spot. Unlike the one in a couple A moves, this ribbon's a solid object just like in Showtime, and it's shaded the color of your player slot. By default, Peach uses performative sparkle energy to guide the ribbon in a full circle around her, damaging and repelling nearby enemies. She can also guide the ribbon by pressing forward or up after the move begins, directing it into a cone shape ahead of or above her to hit enemies in those directions. But remember how this rework is giving Peach supportive abilities? In team matches, the ribbon changes to match her team's color, and if it touches a teammate, regardless of if friendly fire is on, they're dealt a single hit that inflicts no damage and deals set knockback that pulls them toward Peach and out of harm's way. And since it puts them into hit stun briefly, it also refreshes the recovery options, potentially saving them if they wouldn't be able to make it back. Sparkle Strike is a multi-purpose move with more usefulness than the old Toad counterattack, harming foes and aiding co-stars all at once. It also gives Peach a tool for mid-range combat that she didn't have before. Even if it's not the strongest, it still has use in 1v1 matches. Worth mentioning that if a teammate gets refreshed by the ribbon, they have to land before it'll work on them again, to prevent cheesy stall tactics. Meanwhile, it took me a while to figure out a good side special, but I eventually decided to just rework what was already there. Same basic concept as before, but we're overhauling the animation to be more than just a pun on Armika's Flying Peach move. Now, pressing forward in B, has Peach pause for a moment, raise one hand up to above her shoulder, and gather her magic into the form of a small, glowing pink orb. Then she lunges forward like usual, but now with her opposite arm outstretched instead of her posterior. If she contacts another fighter, their shield, or any other object with a hurt box while moving, she rebounds off them slightly and immediately flings the orb at them for a point-blank pink explosion. She's handled explosives of her own in at least one game before, and now this move's name is more accurate. This reskinned Peach Bomber packs all the punch and hype of the original while being a more natural, and less stereotypical, extension of her abilities. Deals comparable damage and knockback to the old version, so all the same strategies apply, including taking care not to miss, because you're still wide open if you whiff the thing. Up special is next. What kind of twists do we have for Peach's recovery? Actually, no twist at all. The only special I left completely alone, Peach's parasol still fits her perfectly fine and gets the job done for recovering. The movement mix-ups from opening and closing it are also fully intact. Combined with Peach's improved airspeed, it makes getting back to the stage a cinch. It even has limited combat use, able to kill off the top if you get a read with it near the ceiling. But what about her down special? I wouldn't dare replace that, would I? Nah, but I didn't give it some updates. On use, Peach still pulls a vegetable out of the ground that becomes a throwable item. Now, though, it's not just turnips she can pluck. Now most of the other veggies from Super Mario Bros. 2 can show up. This makes it easier than ever to tell them apart and gauge how strong they'll be when thrown. The new veggie types still have different expressions, so that part of the move isn't lost. The dreaded Stitch Face, though? It gets an original, half-rotted, zombie-like design. Basically the veggie version of a poison mushroom. I've also adjusted the RNG behind the move, with newer, easier-to-understand odds for each veggie type and other items to appear. And if you notice, there's a new item in there. Now Peach has a very small chance to pluck a healing sprout, that item new to ultimate that slowly heals whoever holds it or whoever it sticks to. Peach can keep it for herself or throw it at a teammate to passively heal them for further support. Just don't let an opponent get a hold of it. 
These quality of life updates should help Peach's down special work better than ever, while maintaining its role as a projectile to aid her punishes and combos, and its shock factor whenever a stitch face or a bomb shows up. Here comes the grand finale. We're giving Peach a brand new final smash. Though anyone who's beaten Showtime saw it coming a mile away. Her ultimate transformation for the game's final confrontation fits the role of an ultimate attack perfectly. Channeling the Smash Ball's energy, Peach amplifies her own, darkening the stage aside from a spotlight directly on her as an extravagant dress forms around her made of pure creative sparkle. Utilizing its power, she flies off screen and into the background, hovering in place with ease as a fancy looking reticle appears on screen to aim with. Pick your location and press B, or wait around long enough, and Peach fires a radiant beam straight at your target, the impact pulling nearby foes in for multiple hits, leading to a climactic final blow. But this move, too, has supportive abilities. If any teammates are within range of the laser, it heals them instead. Whether felling her foes or saving her allies, the power of Sparkle helps Peach create a happy ending. And there. A revamped version of Princess Peach and Smash that takes an already good foundation and elevates it by refining the ideas behind her design and incorporating ideas both old and new from her popular recent outings. With newfound supportive abilities, she can directly aid her companions in ways she'd naturally want to. And with reworks to her float mechanic and combos, her punish-focused playstyle is still effective, but no longer so physically demanding that it actively harms those who try to compete using her. She wouldn't want them to get hurt either. Hopefully this one feels like enough of an upgrade to be worth it, even if Peach isn't in as neat of a rework, neutral special aside, as most previous characters in this series. This one's more about updates and refinements. After all, any good actor wants to keep practicing and improving their craft. Any Peach mains in the audience, did I strike the right balance with this one, or did I lean too hard into Showtime and Super Mario RPG specifically? Who knows, maybe the positive reception toward Showtime will ensure Peach gets another starring role in the near future. Maybe it'll also open things up for more spin-offs focused on other Mario characters. I wouldn't mind if, say, Bowser got a 3D brawler with highly destructible environments, or if Waluigi tagged along for Wario's next thing. Special thanks to the following for helping make this video happen. Shout out to my patrons for the continued support. And now, the spotlight is on them. Anyone currently backing me on Patreon for as little as $1 per month can vote on which of these three characters gets a remake next. There's someone who could really use some fixing up. So, until next time. Sorry, uh, I don't have any cake. <laughs>